Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. But today, we're gonna take some incense and make some really amazing smoke photos. These are really, really fun and simple to do. You can do these in your home studio or in a garage or just pretty much, pretty much anywhere. And uh, you don't need a lot of gear to make this happen. So let me walk you through how I've set things up. So the first thing you need is some kind of black background. This can be a, uh, this is a five in one reflector, just a black reflector here, a subtraction panel. Um, you can use a black seamless paper or just anything that's really, really dark. You need that as your background. The second thing you need is some kind of flash. I'm just using a speed light. You can use a studio strobe, whatever you have, it's going to work. And then whatever camera you have, doesn't really matter which lens that you have. You just wanna make sure that you can fill the frame with this black background. That's the important thing. And that you can focus on the smoke that's in front of the camera. So I'm using a Canon 16 to 35 F 2.8 L but a 7200 would work, a 16 to 35, just about anything is gonna work on your camera. And if you have a point and shoot, it's also gonna work pretty much the same way. Well, let's talk about the flash because that's probably the most difficult thing to set up. And if you don't set it up correctly, you're not gonna have the nice black background, which you need to make these work. So what I've done is I have my flash to the side. So it's coming in to the side here. And I need to make sure that the flash doesn't hit the lens of my camera and I need to make sure it doesn't hit this background. So I can just use maybe some cardboard to put it on the side, just anything to block that flash. But I've got a rogue flash bender. So I put that onto my flash here and that makes sure that this flash is going to come straight this way. So my smoke's gonna be coming up right here. This flash is going to just hit this section and nothing else. And so I'm just illuminating this pocket right in front of my lens, which is pretty cool. So flash bender works great. If you don't have one of those, you can use just about anything just to make sure that you block the light from hitting on the background and on your camera's lens. All right, once you have that set up, we need to meter this light because if you uh, set your camera to TTL metering, the camera is going to try to expose this black background correctly. And what's going to happen is this is going to be overexposed. We don't want that. So to make this work correctly, you need to set your flash and your camera to manual mode. So I've set my camera to manual mode, ISO 100 to keep all the ambient light down. I'm shooting at an aperture of F8. That makes sure I have enough uh, in focus because this smoke's gonna be tricky to focus. And my uh, shutter speed is 200th of a second, which is the sync speed of this camera. As far as my flash, I have it set to manual mode. I'm remotely triggering that with the radio trigger. Um, you can use a radio trigger or a cable if you need to do that. And then I'm gonna meter this. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm using my Siconic light meter. I'm going to point this to my flash here and just trigger this really quickly. You know, make sure that that is turned on. So yeah, let me do that really fast. That guy is on. Okay, so now, I've triggered that and that is metering at F8. And so that's gonna be just fine. So what I've found out though, that um, whatever setting this meter, so I've set this at F8, I have metered this at F8. I need to crank up my flash, usually one stop, maybe one and a half stops brighter than my meter is saying because of the way the smoke is um, to overexpose that smoke just a little bit. You have to play with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my flash really quickly just to make sure that that is a little bit brighter than I said. So it's at an eighth, I'm gonna go up to a quarter power here. Once that's set, I am all good. So just play with that. You'll see on the back of your screen or your computer as you're shooting what the correct level is. All right, now that we have everything set up, all we need to do is light our incense. I've got a little piece of wood here that my friend Keith drilled out some holes on and we just stuck it on a light stand. You can use whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, a cup, a glass, something on a table. It doesn't really matter. You just need to have some incense. So I will light this up. The other thing I need to do is focus this. And so to focus this, it's a little tricky. I'm not gonna use the autofocus on my camera. Because if I do that, it's going to, there we go, we got some smoke. It's gonna try to focus on the background. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna put my lens in manual focus. And then I'm gonna see where this smoke is and put my finger right above it. Then I'm gonna focus on my finger. And then I know that since my finger here, my camera is focused on that, I'm gonna get this smoke coming straight up in focus. And that's probably the easiest way to do that. All right, so now that we have everything set up, let's start shooting. And then we'll show you how to process these in post-production to make them really stand out.
So I'm wiggling my fingers in the smoke here to create some turbulence. That's gonna help that smoke look a little bit better. The other thing you're gonna need to do is take a lot of photos because smoke is unpredictable and so you need a lot of options. So you might wanna shoot 100 or 200 photos so that you get the right smoke shape. All right, so I'm gonna keep on shooting here. The other thing you can try is adding multiple sticks of incense to get multiple streams of smoke. You can just play with this. You really want to do a lot of different experiments before you hop over into post-production. So I'll shoot a few more using a couple of variations and then we'll head over to Photoshop. Now that our photo shoot is done, we can hop onto our computer and do some things with these images. The cool thing is it doesn't take very long and you can get some really stunning results. So we're gonna start in Lightroom. I've already loaded all these images in. I've already zipped through them and flagged the ones I like. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna show you these really quickly. I've got one that was shot with multiple sticks of incense. I think that's pretty interesting. And this one here looks sort of like a flower. That could be interesting. The key to this is you wanna shoot a lot of different images so that you have a lot of options in post-production because maybe you can print these out and make some really cool art to put on your wall. But even if you don't shoot a lot of the smoke, you're not gonna have a lot of options to really mix and match these in the future. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one that looks sort of like a flower here. I'm gonna go into the develop module. Now in Lightroom, you can do some things that are pretty simple. So you can change the color temperature to make that blue. You can change the tint to you know, make that a little bit punchier. But to really play with these, we need to go over into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to say edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. And then we can do some really cool stuff. All right, the image is in Photoshop. The first thing I wanna do is I want to change everything from a black background and a white smoke to the exact opposite. To do that, we need to create an inverse image. All you have to do is hit Command or Control and hit I on your keyboard. Boom, it totally reverses everything. It's like an X-ray kind of a negative effect. Once we've done that, now we can do the same thing that we did before with our sliders to change the color temperature and stuff. So in Photoshop, go to Filter, and we're gonna go to the Camera Raw Filter. That's gonna give us a familiar interface if you're coming over from Lightroom. Now we have our color temperature here, so we can make this a different color. So I'm gonna make it blue, you can make it red or orange or whatever you want, just play with that slider. You can play with the tint. That's also gonna change the background a little bit if you do that. So just play with these. There's no right or wrong answer. Once you get something that you like, you might wanna add some clarity. You can really crank that up, take the texture up. You can change the highlights and the shadows and the contrast. Do whatever you want. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Um, so you can zoom in here and see exactly what you're getting. You're probably gonna wanna crop these before you print them or add them as screensavers or whatever. So just sort of zip around and see what you're getting uh, until you get something that you like. That's all there is to it. So I'll hit okay. And now we're gonna have an interesting image. Let's do one more very, very quickly. So over to Lightroom, I'm gonna go over to this image here that was a multiple sticks of incense. Edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now that's in Photoshop. I'm gonna double click the hand so we get a nice large view. Again, Commander Control I, boop, it reverses that. I can go into my camera raw filter. Once I have that, it's going to allow me to change that. So, uh, sorry, I did that wrong, filter. Adobe Camera Raw Filter. Now we can change, make this red or blue or green or whatever you want to do. I always like to add a lot of clarity to this to really make it punchy. You can add a lot of contrast to this, add some, take some contrast out. It doesn't really matter. Play with the exposure. See if I take this exposure down, we're getting a lot more out of this image, which is really, really cool. We can change our white level. It doesn't matter. Play with these and you can see that we're going to get some really fun, interesting results. And that's what this is all about. Get in your studio, light some incense, take some photos, hop over into Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever your choice is, play with them, create some art that belongs to you. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. That way you don't miss a single episode. I wanna mention that because in the future, we're gonna take these images 
and then we're going to apply them to some stuff that we shoot in the studio and some advanced Photoshop stuff. It's going to be really, really cool. You don't want to miss out on that. So make sure you turn on the bell so you get notifications of all the episodes coming out. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm posting all kinds of behind the scenes stuff. In fact, I just posted a story today of this very video and how I created it. So you don't want to miss out on that. Thanks again for joining me and I will see you again next time.